So the question is, what advice would I give somebody who is lost but wants to contribute to a more beautiful world? That would depend on whether advice was called for. Probably I wouldn't give advice. Maybe the most useful thing to do would be to acknowledge the lostness and acknowledge and celebrate the uh, sincere desire to contribute something beautiful. The way that we see a person and hold a person in our, in our mind's eye, the way that we narrate another person, is an invitation for that person to be as we see them or to play the role that we see them in. So, for example, if you see somebody as a, an untrustworthy scoundrel and treat them as such, they're probably or very likely going to demonstrate a lack of trustworthiness. And if you see someone as a generous person and because you just know that they're generous, you, you, I mean, sometimes you can get taken advantage of that way. This is not like a formula for controlling people, but generally speaking, how you see a person creates an invitation for them to be that way. If you engage people from a place of being afraid of them, they're going to very possibly act in a way that justifies that fear. So I like to see people as, as, yeah, you're a person who really wants to give something beautiful because people may not even fully believe that of themselves. People often have, have a lot of self-doubt and self-criticism and don't believe of, they don't believe the best of themselves, even when it's true. So this isn't about, it's not about ignoring or skipping over or pretending that the flaws and the, the selfishness and the ego do, don't exist. It's about seeing what's true and calling it into consciousness, calling it into, and, and even um, establishing an agreement that that is who you are. It makes it more real. Again, reality is more of a conversation than a fixed objective fact. It can't be a trick. Like I have to actually see that in somebody to effectively name it and bring it into consciousness. There could be many other things that I could see alongside it. But those might be things that the person sees already. Like, you know, there's like this whole thing about calling someone on their blind spots and holding them to account. And yeah, it's important to do that in the right moment. I appreciate that when people do it for me. And it's also important to name the blind spots that are the beautiful things. To name the gifts that you see in somebody. Because anything brought into awareness is then able to proceed in its evolution. The evolution of a wound or a blind spot is toward healing. The evolution of a gift is toward expression. So in either case, it is helpful to, to name it if there's um, the receptive moment and appropriateness of naming it. Again, it's something that, that I, I like to await, um, I, I like to sense an invitation of some sort, which may be explicit, but usually not. But usually there's a feeling, yeah, it's, this is the moment to have this kind of interaction.